and welcome to Integrid TV in association with Enderati. I'm joined now by Giles Dixon, CEO of Wind Europe. Hello. Thank you for joining us, Giles. Pleasure. I think a lot of this uh, conference, this event, is going to be talking about the clean energy package mm -hmm. and the integration of renewables such as wind mm. into the grid. And we've seen some very impressive figures lately mm. uh, with wind output. And I wonder if you mm. could just start by painting that kind of picture of how yeah. much of a force wind is becoming. Yeah, Europe. okay. So wind is now over 10% of Europe's electricity consumption, okay? We monitor this on a daily basis. 10% is the current annual average, yeah? There are three countries in Europe where wind is consistently 25% of the power supply. That is Denmark, Ireland, and Portugal. That is their yearly average. In Denmark, it's touching 40%. In fact, yesterday in Denmark, over 100% of electricity demand was met by wind. Okay, so that, and how much are they actually using in the grid? All of that? Or yeah. is some kind so of getting wasted? And the Danes classically would export their surplus wind to Germany and other Nordic countries, yeah, through the excellent transmission networks that they have, the interconnectors. Yeah. yeah. I know you said um, when we were talking off air, one of your messages at this event is to say to the you know, two sides, the TSOs, the DSOs, that you need to be making you know, investments in the right way in the, those interconnectors yeah. to facilitate, I suppose, the growth of wind. Yeah. Absolutely. Look, both sides have got to be making investments here. Uh, I'll come on to the investments we in the wind industry are making. Uh, but on the transmission and distribution side, yes, we need the investments in the interconnectors. In the big um, intranational uh, lines, such as the north-south lines in Germany, which are very important for getting the, the wind in the north of Germany and in the North Sea and the Baltic to the big demand centers in the south, of Germany and progress is being made there, which is uh, very encouraging. But yeah, we need those investments. We need investments in smart grid. Uh, we need investments in demand response because we're generating variable electricity, of course. That's wind, it's variable. Uh, the more variable demand we have, the easier it is to balance the electricity uh, system. And smart grid, the IT software and hardware, plays an important role in matching the variable supply with the variable demand. Now, let me tell you what we're doing in the wind industry itself to help this. We are conscious, we're variable. We need to make ourselves more flexible and less variable. So the latest generation of wind turbines, for example, include turbines that can operate at lower wind speeds. Okay, so we're catching more of the wind than we used to. Okay, so our downtime is less than it used to be. That's the first thing we're doing, right? Second thing we're doing is to have much faster ramp up and ramp down time so that we can be immediately responsive to what the TSOs and the DSOs want from us by way of output, okay? And then we're offering the balancing and other ancillary services. We have all the technology to do this now. So frequency control, for example. Onshore wind farms have been offering mm -hmm. frequency control for many years. The problem we have there actually is not that we cannot offer it. In many countries, we are legally excluded from the balancing and other ancillary services markets. Fortunately, that is going to change with the clean energy package. There'll be a level playing field so that wind can play in those markets. Because we can do, for example, frequency control cheaper than a lot of the conventional power plant operators. Really good news hot off the presses for you is that just two weeks ago, offshore wind for the first time delivered frequency control. And that was in the UK, uh, a very modern wind farm in Liverpool Bay, Burbo Bank, it's called. It's got the largest offshore wind turbines in the world, eight uh, megawatts. And National Grid asked them to deliver frequency uh, uh, control, and they did exactly uh, what National Grid asked of them, which was very pleasing to see. Yeah, I mean, what sort of impact would that have on the rest of the industry? Well, it makes it easier for the TSOs to balance the electricity system in the market, yeah, for example. Mm. Yeah. We, um, we did an interview with Lawrence Schmidt mm. uh, recently, yeah. obviously Secretary General of Indeed. Um, and he said his vision is that a Spanish prosumer would be able to buy cheap Nordic wind mm -hmm. on a day when there wasn't much sunshine yeah. in Spain. Yeah. Um, a, do you foresee that's going to be possible? And B, what kind of time frame would you expect that um, to yep. be realized? We certainly share that vision. Okay, and we're working actively with Laurent and the whole of NCOE and with the DSOs to deliver on that vision. When will it be deliverable? That depends on governments. So, Giles, a lot yeah. of, um, well, there's a mixture of, of kind of talk here about solutions mm. to integration of networks. You know, it's, it's 
some, some people saying it's less about an engineering problem needing mm. a solution, and maybe it's more about a needing a data mm. solution. Yeah. What would you say to okay. that? Uh, data is crucial, okay, and digitalization is crucial to solving these issues. Uh, let me tell you what we're doing in the wind industry. Uh, wind turbines now have lots of sensors on them that are feeding data about operational performance, the stresses and strains on the equipment, back to the wind farm operators and the utilities, okay? And what the operators are doing with that data is they are taking decisions on a day-by-day -day basis about the level at which they can operate all of their equipment, okay? All of the assets in their fleet of wind farms, of wind turbines, okay? They can also take decisions about when to shut down certain equipment and do what we call predictive maintenance, okay? Maintenance is interesting because in wind we used to do preventative maintenance. We would mm. just assume that every so many years a turbine would need repairing without any intelligent information on the actual operational performance at that moment in time of the equipment. Now we get the latter information so we can do predictive maintenance. We can see exactly how all the components are operating. So we have that data, yeah? Yeah. We then have the weather forecasting mm. data, yeah, which is increasingly accurate. So we can now predict with 95% accuracy up to six to seven days what the wind is going to be doing, okay? So we put that data together with the data that we have about the operational performance and the um, the likely future operational performance of all of our equipment. We put it together and we make predictions which we send to the TSOs and the DSOs mm. about what we are going to be able to produce. Okay, That then informs their decisions a few days ahead about where the electricity is coming from. So the digitalization is really helpful to, to everybody. Yeah, I mean, do you yeah. see that being a game changer, being able to know, right, okay, in 72 hours, you know, we're going to get this from it's wind. very significant, especially when we're moving to more intraday trading. Yeah, yeah. very helpful. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Giles, Not for at your all. insight. Thank My you pleasure. Us. Nice um, talking to you. That's all from Integrid TV in association with Enderati. Thanks for watching. Mm.